What's up everybody, it's Elon Charles Fly Fishing back with a forecast for June 17th. Missed a couple episodes and I apologize for that. Obviously, uh, if you tune into Five Flies, you know that my wife had our second child and then uh, we moved the shop. So we've been a little busy, missed a couple episodes. I apologize. Uh, fishing's been pretty good. Obviously, we've dropped from runoff a little bit earlier than I think we all expected, but we had a pretty dry June, so, um, or dry spring, I should say, which means that you know, runoff didn't really last as long as we expected. And we're seeing some lower water than uh, normal, especially on some of our free stones. So be mindful of that fact. Uh, you know, when the water temperature hits 67, you know, cut it off, have a couple beers, enjoy the scenery, but uh, fishing is probably not in the cards uh, when the temp water temperatures get that high. So we've been seeing some elevated water temperatures, especially, you know, lower on the Eagle, you know, through the middle of the Colorado. Uh, we've seen those lower water, or higher water temperatures uh, when you get into the afternoon. So early morning is definitely uh, the way to do it if you want to guarantee a good solid eight hours on the water. You know, getting out there earlier is uh, the way to go. Free stones, tailwaters are also seeing some lower flows, especially specifically Deckers and Cheeseman. We are seeing some elevated flows, uh, or not elevated, but higher flows on 11 Mile and in, on the Dream Stream. And you know, that's because they're trying to fill Cheeseman Reservoir. So uh, we'll see that sort of change, that dynamic change once Cheeseman Reservoir is fill, filled. Um, and it's about 89% full at the time of this filming. So <clears throat> that's just around the corner uh, as they're pumping like 245 through 11 mile. Um, speaking of temp water temperatures, make sure that you're uh, roping up when the water temperatures get above 65 using thicker tippet and then also uh, use you know thermometers to make sure you're keeping uh, a sharp eye on those water temperatures so we've got some in the shop here uh, we're sitting in the education center trying to find a good place to film this uh, and the education center is the place to film it today I might switch it up, try to find a good spot uh, as, as we sort of settle into the new space. If you haven't been here, 1025 Zuni Street, Denver, Colorado, 80204. Uh, we moved, we opened up on Friday and uh, said goodbye to the old shop, hello to the new shop, a lot more space, parking here on, at the uh, shop and we're on the Denver South Point, if you haven't heard. Broken record, but I'm gonna keep on saying it. So let's get down to it. Let's talk bugs flows, and weather. Bugs. I chose a lot of dry flies, so chose some hopper droppers, um, and chose some good nymphs for the tailwaters. I'm gonna start with some attractors. Hippie stomper in pink. Stimulator in purple. Both of those flies Good sort of lead flies if you're throwing either a double dry, big bushy, fly, big bushy fly with a smaller dry fly outfit, or if you want to throw a hopper dropper, that hippie sniper will hold uh, some pretty heavy flies underneath. So you can drop some tungsten flies, uh, some big beaded flies, and that'll hold pretty well. And that stimulator is always a good go-to if you're dropping one dropper off and you know want to you know, go tight to the bank. <clears throat> um, you know, the reason stimulators and hippie snipers are on the list right about now uh, beetles, um, hoppers, crickets, terrestrials, those, those are definitely at play. So be prepared on uh, all sorts of water with that. You can see, uh, you know, fish, fish will eat hoppers anywhere. Don't just uh, fish those on the free sends. Give them a try on the tailwaters as well. <clears throat> also grab some PMDs. All right, if you're looking for a good sort of tandem fly, if you're throwing a double dry, uh, you know, maybe throw this purple power wolf in a size 18 right behind this purple stimulator. Um, you can also think this fish is a single dry. You know, we're seeing, you know, I was at the Arkansas a couple days ago, uh, saw trichos, caddis, sallies, uh, midges, blueing olives, hoppers, uh, and two of those bugs that we were talking about well imitated by this little purple power wolf. So that always gets the job done. A good attractor mayfly type uh, fly. So definitely keep that in your box. Smaller sizes, bigger sizes, definitely worth a shot. Um, speaking of caddis, the foam caddis in black. Saw a bunch of small black caddis on the Arkansas. You also see caddis 
uh, on a variety of uh, watersheds at this time of year. Uh, it might be fading a little bit, but they're sort of gonna, they're gonna be present. Uh, and so having a good a caddis as a second dry or a single dry is definitely worth a shot. Uh, PMDs are still present. I grabbed the pink Iwani Dunn. Sort of has this extended body, super visible, uh, and does a great job of imitating a, a PMD. You're throwing hopper droppers, hot belly PT, purple, orange, green, and then if you another good dropper with all the caddis around, a good faux hawk will always uh, catch some fish. For nymphs, obviously. Always have the standards, the pats, rubber legs, the eggs, the worms, that sort of stuff. Also in that book, or the standards, I would put the RS2, black with trichos being present. Definitely good to have a small RS2 on you. So grab some trichos. Should be seeing those on a lot of your favorite rivers. Uh, they'll typically come out, uh, you'll start to see some duns early, early morning, and then you'll start to see those clouds of trichos, the columns of trichos, um, and those are, that's right, coincides with when you'll see the spinner fall uh, around nine o'clock. So from like nine to 11, nine to 11.30, uh, you know, fishing trichos can be productive if you're into the techie kind of stuff. Not me, I hate it. I'll do it, but I hate it. Uh, so I grabbed a couple. One person I know who loves it is uh, Old Landon Mayer. He's, his tails up trico is a good option. And then uh, the Iwani Dunn in the trico variety. This is like a size 24. Uh, trichos are the worst, but fish like to eat them. They'll eat gobs of them. They're super small, 20s to 24s, 18s maybe. Um, yeah, you can find sippers on the South Platte. You can find sippers uh, on the Arkansas, the Colorado, the Eagle, uh, and it'll be a morning time hatch, so be ready for that. Same thing with PMDs. PMDs you'll start to see sort of mid, mid morning into the early afternoon. I also grabbed a streamer. It's always a good time to throw a streamer, in my opinion. Uh, and I actually just saw these in the shop. They're not on the water tested, but they have everything that I like about a streamer. Have some flash, have a big head, and some marabou. Uh, the Dragon Minis, uh, these, we have them black, like in tan, yellow. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Anytime I see an articulated streamer that has those three things, I'm interested. So that's the bugs. Let's get to the flows and then we'll talk weather. So flows. I believe I mentioned this earlier, but uh, the, on the tailwaters, we're seeing elevated flows, dream streams at 245, 244 at 11 mile, and it's 80 below Cheeseman and into Deckers. Uh, Cheeseman Reservoir is at 89% full. And the reason they have those elevated flows above Cheeseman Reservoir, they're trying to fill it. Uh, once they fill it, I'm sure the flows will get bumped a little bit uh, more uh, below Cheeseman. So we'll see a bump in flows and that'll be a good thing. Keep water sort of cooler. Uh, you won't have as much of a temperature issue. You might see some uh, more bugs popping. Um, so that's on the tailwater, on the tailwaters, you know, with the elevated flows, not elevated flows, higher than normal flows, higher than average flows, actually a little bit average uh, flows on uh, the South Platte. You know, typically you can use bigger bugs, uh, but you are gonna see trichos, you're gonna see caddis, you're gonna see um, you know, yellow sallies and stuff like that. So uh, be mindful of that. Blue wing ovs will still be around. Midges will still appear e like early morning and evening. Uh, so be prepared uh, for those tailwaters. It should be a little less techy though on the uh, 11 mile dream stream area than you'll see at Deckers. Uh, although if you'll, know, you'll stay tuned, I have a featured sort of guide report that I wanted to talk about uh, where Brian Hilbert was crushing them on uh, the old Pat's rubber legs of Deckers. So it goes to show you, you can be a little bit weird uh, during times of low flows and uh, get into some fish. So uh, free stones, all these are below average, but I did see that the Colorado Kremlin, the Colorado Kremlin is bumping, which is a good thing. So that's at 940, that's below average. The Eagles at 325, that's below average. And the Arkansas is at 692, which is a below, aver below average as well. Um, the freestones, as I mentioned, those flows are lower with a hot summer. You can see some elevated water temps, so be uh, mindful of that. Uh, but fishing has been very productive, especially in the mornings, early afternoons. Um, I was at the Arkansas a couple days ago, 
and I think we saw the smorgasbord of bugs and fish really actually didn't, it was pretty cool in the morning. Fish didn't really tune in up top, like on top until around 11 and from like 11 to three, it was uh, pretty, pretty darn productive on top with the tractors, with, you know, big wolves, you know, you could throw, you know, elk hair caddis, a foam caddis, uh, you know, para wolves, parachute atoms, all that sort of stuff was super productive. So, you know, those flows are, you're still gonna see some bugs, especially up high. The higher you go, uh, generally the cooler it's gonna, the water temperature gonna be, the cooler the air temperature is gonna be. Uh, so that's uh, always a good thing to do when you get these lower flows. Um, you know, it's a balancing act, but it's something to pay attention to. So that's flows as good as the weather. All right, so as we usually do, looking at Sedalia and Vail, <clears throat> Sedalia, we're gonna be hot into this weekend and then it's gonna be a little bit cooler through next week, uh, which is a positive thing. We have some PM thunderstorms coming in. Obviously, the more rain, the better this uh, this year. We want those monsoon rains. Uh, and when it comes to Vail in the high country, uh, the highest high is at 80 uh, with some you know, lows into the 50s. There's PM showers scheduled for Monday or Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday next week. Um, so want to see those, those cloudy, those clouds roll in in the afternoon, keep those water temperatures cool, but also want to see that extra rain. We all obviously need uh, some extra water. So pay attention to, to that. Make sure you're keeping flows in mind. Think of it, the news desk, the night, action nine news desk with all these, this paper. We're gonna switch it up next time. I don't think I can do this uh, much longer at the action desks. So uh, we did this earlier uh, in the series, this in 2020, when we got the guide shack up and running and we sort of fell off because we weren't doing guided trips through March and April. And then we had some technical difficulties. We weren't getting as many updates as we uh, were looking for, but we're starting to get the guide check starting to build up with uh, reports and guides are on it. They're getting uh, their updating reports and we're going to go back to featuring uh, uh, reports every two weeks. So we also do this uh, every Monday on the blog, feature a guide report. This one is from Brian Hilbert. This is fishing Deckers. Uh, Deckers was great despite hardly any bug activity. So, occasional yellow sally or caddis. We didn't really see any attachments take place that the trout were keying on. We had most of our success on patch rubber legs in size eight, holding in faster water, water smaller pocket sniffing rigs with five X and parachute ants, you know, before lunch, um, you know, throwing some dry dropper rigs. Uh, so they're basically finding the fish in that super oxygenated area of water uh, where the water temperature is a little bit lower and the fish are a little bit happier. Um, it's pretty cool. Although he, one thing to note, and this is also, uh, pretty awesome. Water temps stayed cool with cloud cover, took his last reading of 58 degrees before we left at 3 p.m. So 58 degrees, that's, you'd have to warm up quite a bit through the rest of the day. But there wasn't much day left to get to 65, 67. Uh, so we are still seeing some lower water temps, uh, especially when the conditions are right. And that's with uh, 90 degree uh, heat. So, um, you know, it's going to be a balancing act. Obviously, the high country is a really great option. Uh, you know, getting up to the high country, lakes, creeks, streams, that sort of stuff. Uh, but there's a lot of good fishing to be had. Come visit us here at the new shop. Uh, and be interested to see where I film the next episode. Maybe it'll be out on the floor. Maybe it'll be out, out on the water. <clears throat> to, be t to be determined. Uh, I might film it on the Denver South Plant. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. Appreciate the patience. As always, uh, see you here in the shop. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, we'll see you later in the next one, two weeks from now, because we do this every two weeks. It's the forecast. Okay, bye.